this is actually a caustic ingestion. So you can see this is a, uh, a very fibrotic stricture. I don't know how well this projects on zoom, but uh, if you look at the six o'clock position, you kind of see this whitish hue to the stricture. The inner diameter here is uh, uh, probably around seven or eight millimeters. Uh, so here we are passing a savory wire and we're able to get our venting tube uh, over the wire. And we're positioning the venting tube uh, so that these black notches are uh, straddling the uh, stricture. The stricture is probably around you know, 15 or 20 millimeters long. And then we're going to start our spray. And so what I generally do is I um, uh, will put the catheter out by uh, three or four millimeters. And this allows us to maintain adequate visualization as we're applying the cryogen. Um, sometimes if you're working too close, you can freeze your lens and, uh, and that really limits uh, visualization. And we're going around the stricture, trying to do a 360 degree uh, freeze. So if you look at this four o'clock position, that nub of tissue over here, this is a nice example of preferential scarring. So Dr. Samarcina mentioned this. So this patient had multiple uh, balloon dilations and uh, if you look at all her historic pictures, the mucosal rent, the tear is almost always in that direction. So there is some sort of intrinsic weakness in that side of the wall, and that's where she preferentially te tears with these uh, balloon dilations, and almost never has she had any significant treatment uh, effect on the other side. And so by applying that freeze, we're sort of molding that scar tissue, and we're able to create... Um, hopefully a more uh, uh, durable um, uh, stretch of that entire area and avoiding that preferential tearing. So this is our um, third uh, uh, application here. Um, and uh, the other very important technical detail is I always have a distension monitor. Uh, so one of our nurses or fellows, always when we're applying the cryogen has their hand on the abdomen um, and they're feeling for any uh, distension. If there's any uh, concern, the belly's getting stiff or more distended, then they let us know when we immediately stop the delivery of the cryogen. So here we're passing a, a through the scope uh, um, uh, controlled radial expansion uh, uh, balloon dilator, and we're slowly inflating it, uh, and we're uh, sort of trying to um, get it uh, positioned uh, sort of uh, across the center of the stricture. And we're using that looking across the balloon technique as we're slowly inflating and we're watching for um, that uh, uh, tear to happen. You can see the wall is blanching. It's uh, um, uh, very fibrotic and very slowly we're starting to see uh, our tear forming here. So we're gonna hold the balloon for a while and continue to look through um, to make sure that our uh, tear isn't uh, propagating very rapidly or very deeply. And um, once our 60 or 90 second uh, period is over, we're going to uh, deflate our balloon and examine our stricture for any um, uh, signs of perforation or deep muscle injury. Um, and uh, you know, generally we want to see something, you know, you don't want to go and dilate and not create any mucosal rent. Uh, so now we can see uh, it's a little bit glitchy on my side. Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, um, we're seeing some submucosal fibers, nothing that looks like a deep muscle injury here. And that's our um, complete uh, dilation. 